All right, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Uh, so we're going to take you on a little platform engineering journey today about navigating the no code to full code spectrum. And so we're going to take you through some hypothetical examples, a conceptual platform, but we're also going to dive into something a little bit more concrete and tangible as well. So this is my friend Max. Uh, he's a cloud advisory consultant with Accenture, a uh, longtime contributor to the Crossplane project, and uh, has taken a lot of his customers to production environments with their platforms. And then my name is Jared. I'm a founding engineer at Upbound, and I'm one of the creators of both the CNCF Rook project and the Crossplane project as well. So Max is going to get us started with some pre-flight checks before we start our, our journey. Thank you, Jared. Uh, so very warm welcome and good morning from my side. I think it's a bit cold here in the room. But um, so let's get this started. So yeah, I'm a consultant at Accenture. And we um, are developing platforms for clients. And we have had some journey over the last four or three years. And we want to talk a bit about, about this. And before we start into what we have done, I want to start with uh, what was actually the problem. Why are we actually building platforms? And also, uh, what was the initial goal? So what did we actually want to achieve? And so at Accenture, we are working with many different clients, and we've discovered that they all have sort of the same problem. They have a lot of uh, smaller application development teams. And they have to build apps, and they have to run these apps. But they don't have the man capacity, and they also don't necessarily have the skill sets to operate and to run all these applications and then configure their cloud infrastructure, make sure that everything is uh, secure and compliant, and then integrate everything into the IT, internal IT uh, landscape of their company. And so what we are doing together with our clients is we are helping them to develop platforms that take the load off of these developers so that they can actually focus on their actual goals. And as these platforms the goal or the idea behind this is that we are offering an API. And so the question is, what do we want this API to be like? And the first thing that we want is we want a universal API. Because if you are working with cloud infrastructure, when you're working with different technologies, you have a lot of different tools that you have to know, you have to understand. Um, and this is really difficult for some teams, especially if you only have maybe five to six or seven people. And so what we are doing um, is we are building with our clients, we are building Kubernetes-based platforms where they only have to use one tool, which is kubectl, and they only have to talk one to one API, which is the Kubernetes API. The second thing we want is we want the API to be declarative because um, in many cases, when you are setting up configurations, then you have this step-by-step -step kind of imperative uh, uh, yeah, systems. Um, and it's really complicated for humans, and it takes a lot of time. And what we want to do is we want to offer an API that is, uh, that is declarative and that uses continuous reconciliation so that the platform takes actually care on building uh, the resources, and so developers only have to focus on a manifest. Um, and the last thing that we want is we want a simple API, because if you're working with APIs, we're working with cloud infrastructure, then you have a huge amount of options. And this is really complicated. And we want to boil things down for developers so that they can actually just really care about setting up a database. but they don't really have to know how to configure all these things underneath. So this is what we want to do. And now let's get this journey started. And I hand over to Jared. All right, yep. So we have finished our pre-flight checks. We are ready to start step one of our journey here. This is back in 2018 for me and Max. Um, and basically, step one is uh, creating a control plane. So Max kind of outlines you know, what the high-level goals are, what the vision is here. So we got to start somewhere on actually building a practical system, right? Um, the goals at this point in step one shouldn't be too complicated. Basically, we want to make sure that our developers can get some infrastructure and some resources in the cloud, et cetera when they need it. And then let's also keep those resources healthy over time. 
So not huge goals right now in step one. Uh, so basically, take a look at this diagram. We've got our developers at the top there. Uh, we're going to build something for them to be able to request infrastructure from, uh, from this platform here. And that platform will go and provision the you know, cloud resources, infrastructure, whatnot, um, on their behalf. And then those same developers would then build and deploy their apps and services, and then you know, kind of get, get that running on top of the infrastructure that the platform deployed for them, right? So we talked about developers requesting infrastructure. Um, so to do that, they need some sort of interface, right? They need an API. So a step one here, this control plane we're building, and the API could be very, very granular. It could expose basically everything. Uh, so all the infrastructure you could think of could be exposed in that API for your developers to access or request uh, directly. So that would be good from the perspective of they're going to get what they need, and they're going to get into production quickly. The platform won't be a bottleneck for them at all. Right? They could basically uh, use this platform API, request an S3 bucket directly. The platform goes and provisions it out in the cloud. And then the developers get what they need. They get to production quickly. That part is really cool. So now let's move from hypothetical to concrete and tangible. So we're going to talk about, uh, throughout this project presentation here, uh, an implementation using the Crossplane project. So the Crossplane project, it's a CNCF open source project. It's incubating. Uh, I've been saying for a couple different KubeCons now that we'll be graduating soon because we've had the proposal open for a number of months. The process moves slowly, but hopefully we'll be graduating soon. Um, so basically, it extends Kubernetes. It takes that control plane to uh, teach it how to not just manage containers, but manage all of your infrastructure as well, right? This is that universal aspect we were talking about of the API. So it's basically something, a control plane that can kind of handle everything for you. Every resource is exposed as a CRD in the Kubernetes API. So it kind of turns your Kubernetes API from you know, config maps, deployments, pods, et cetera, to buckets, caches, databases, that sort of stuff. They're all well-formed um, you know, uh, YAML manifests here, let's say, uh, API version, kind, metadata, spec, status, all that stuff you'd expect from a regular uh, Kubernetes object. You're getting them for all your cloud resources now. Um, the way that works under the covers, developers are going to request directly uh, S3 bucket, let's say, by applying that manifest to the Kubernetes API probably through like a GitOps sort of thing, but under the covers then, Crossplane is running in your Kubernetes control plane. It uh, you know, has a whole bunch of controllers for all those different types of resources, and then uh, you know, they'll get an event from the API saying, hey, this developer has uh, requested a bucket, and then it'll go out to the real world and reconcile that desired state of a bucket with the actual state out there in Amazon, and bucket gets provisioned. So that's cool, but this is not a platform. It is. OK, it is a platform, but it's not a good platform. It's got a whole bunch of problems with it. Uh, for like, it kind of boils down to there's no abstraction whatsoever, right? Everything is exposed directly to your developers. So it forces them to know all the config options, all the complexity. Um, we've lost our separation of concerns, right? The platform team and the dev team, um, there's no separation between them. Uh, and the developers basically have right access to all these low-level resources. And you may as well just hand them the keys to the AWS console, say, have a fun time. Um, um, there's no bottleneck, but there's like no safety either. So this is not a platform. Time to move on to step two. Thank you, Jared. So uh, yeah, so we, we do have kind of a universal API now because we have moved everything into Kubernetes, but we still are missing kind of the platform logic that, that really would help the, the, the developers. So what a real platform would do uh, in the way we would, would expect it is we um, would expect it to reduce complexity, to utilize best practices so that uh, developers don't have to care about them every time. Um, and uh, that we would have simple configuration options and also that we would have to or that we can reduce the manual steps that are required to uh, uh, yeah to set up infrastructure and make your app uh, go and running and so what we did back then in 2020 when crossplane compositions came up we started using these uh, compositions which have this patch and transform framework i I don't know how many people of you in the room know it, but uh, basically what you do in Patch and Transforms is you, you're essentially copying data from an input resource that is created by, you, by the user and merging this together with um, some default values that the platform uh, chooses and then apply this uh, on your cluster and then you have the cross plane providers take care and then create the actual external resources, on, for example, on AWS. And Crossplane also takes care of handling the creation, the deletion, and updating of these resources. Um, 
And this really works well in the aspect now that we have a universal API and we have something that is simple and we also are able to make abstractions so that uh, uh, developers don't have to know every database configuration option in order to get maybe a compliant database. Um, but we still hit a lot of limits and they are quite difficult. So uh, the thing with patch and transforms is, is that it's a very kind of limited flame, uh, framework. And basically because you can only copy things back and forth and you can like simple, you can make simple transformations. Um, but there are a lot of things that you can just, you just cannot implement in patch and transforms. And this really makes it difficult to implement fully declarative APIs. So in many cases, we ended up with uh, APIs where you still needed to do step by step. So first, you have to apply this resource, and then you have to apply this, and then you have to, uh, have to apply this. And this is not really something that you would do if you're working or if you wanted to, uh, to, uh, to do things in, in a GitOps way. And it's also very hard to debug because it's kind of a black box, um, which makes it difficult for platform developers to actually figure out where the, the error is. Um, and so there were some changes over the last two years with Crossplane, and there were Crossplane functions. And Jared, you're introducing them. All right, so we have accomplished a couple things so far with our two steps of our journey, um, but we're, we haven't really accomplished the goals that we set out for yet, um, and I'm sure you all didn't expect us to do that in the first couple steps, right? So let's continue on. Um, so yes, so as Max said, we've built a platform. I'd argue now it's a real platform. It's got a real API. Um, it's kind of complicated. The internals are complicated, but like it's not actually doing complicated things for our users yet, so we're missing something. Uh, we need some more advanced logic, right? We need to be able to uh, capture our organization's unique logic and do a little bit more programmy type of stuff, right? We want flow control, conditionals, maybe templating. Uh, what Max showed you with, comp with uh, composing together resources into an API, that's not a programming language, right? You can't put a lot of logic into it. There's just too many, too many, too many uh, deficiencies, right? Um, while we're at it, it would be really nice to escape this, uh, this YAML hell that we found ourselves in as well, too. Before, before we started this talk, Max was telling me about the um, line, lines of YAML they had for their platform measured in thousands, uh, which, which you didn't like that, right? A hundred, sorry, hundreds of thousands. Let's get out of that. Let's, let's move on. So what, what is this, this third step of our journey, higher level logic? What is, who is this good for, right? This is for a platform team that's operationally focused, and then they probably want to, they still want to have a declarative experience, right? They don't want to spend the time like imperatively declare, de de describing every single step of, that they want their platform to do. They still want to declare like, the intent and let the platform handle it for them. But they want a little bit more complex logic than they've had so far, right? They, they, they want to be able to do more interesting things, um, but not necessarily uh, go to like, a full programming thing and have a whole stack around it, right? Um, they probably also have like, a config language that they're comfortable with, that it's the standard for their team. So they want to use that to start building their platform. So we're moving along here. We're kind of like in this medium code spot now. Um, and let's see what that, what that looks like here. So that's hypothetical, a concrete one here, the, the journey that we took here, me and Max together. Um, now we're talking about functions. So in, in uh, Crossplane, we have the concept of functions that basically allow you to run a pipeline of, of logic that at the end of it tells the platform how and what uh, you know, for composing these resources together for your developers. You can use you know, a lot of different languages. There's a whole bunch of, that are supported. You know, templating, Q, KCL, uh, Pickle, uh, Cell, all sorts of stuff. Um, but basically, like, focus on the, lo the logic of your platform and your unique organizational needs, and then let Crossplane kind of do the rest for you. So this is what it looks like. The, the, the shape of this platform overall hasn't changed a whole lot since we started. But now we're seeing, like, we've got this pipeline here where, you know, one function might start. It's going to kind of specify what are the desired resources that we need to create for our developer, pass that along to the next function. Maybe that's going to mutate the state a little bit, maybe add or remove something, and so on and so forth. And we get to the end, and then the, your function pipeline tells Crossplane, hey, this is a set of resources to create or update or whatever. Go make that happen out in the cloud for me, please. And so don't, don't worry about focusing on every single line here. We're just going to show a couple rapid examples of what this looks like. So you could use templating to dynamically create uh, any number of uh, access key resources. Or you could use KCL to be able to create a, like an EC2 instance in every region that you care about. Or it could, you could use Q. I don't use Q myself, but I've been told this is Q. Uh, so you could use that to basically like create an IAM policy for all of your, your ARNs. 
There's a whole lot of experiences that now have become available to our platform. So in step three here, you can start using the high-level languages of your choice. You get a whole lot more logic, and you can you know, kind of capture, then codify the, 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 the complexity of your platform. Um, you can kind of mix and match. You know, so one team is comfortable with this language. Another team is comfortable with that language. You, know, you can choose the right one for the right scenario. Um, and the community keeps building more, right? Quick bonus, this also allows you to like, get much earlier testing and validation of your platform, too. You can run these functions in isolation, so you don't have to like, go actually set up a control plane or go actually run these things against a real cloud environment. You can run them in isolation, rapidly iterate, get it correct, make sure your, your platform is working the way you want it to, and then get to a good spot there. So now we got step four. Max will take us home here. Thank you. So now we are at the point where we can cover almost all use cases. So we are able to implement uh, logic. We implement, are able to implement for, uh, flow controls in most stages. But there are certain use cases that we have encountered uh, with our clients um, that you still cannot do with these standard functions that are offered by Crossplane. For example, if you have complex multi-step setups, if you have to do some uh, special transformations of your resources, uh, of your inputs, um, if you want to do code sharing between your functions or your components, if you want to unit test really certain specific aspects um, of, of a behavior of a, of a function or something, or if you have developers who just prefer Go over maybe Q or KCL or something else. Um, and so in this case, uh, you're able to implement custom functions in Go, uh, which is a really powerful thing. Um, and you have the full code, and you have the full power of uh, general programming language. Um, and there's one really great thing about doing stuff in Go. Not only do you have like uh, a compiler that tells you if you have done, uh, have done something wrong, but you also uh, can import the CAD structs or the structs that have been used to generate the custom resource definitions from cross-plane providers and use that um, to have some form of static validation. So this is something that's also really powerful when you're writing custom functions in Go. Um, and of course, you have access to the whole Go toolchain, the linters, unit tests, uh, what else, code generators, and so on. So um, this is a really big uh, asset. Um, and one thing, you said this, Jared, but one thing that I want to highlight again is uh, that you don't have to write everything in Go. You, you're not tied to use a very specific language for everything, but you really can choose. You can say, okay, we have this complex component here. We can implement this in Go, and then we have things with lesser complexity, and we can just use like Go templates, Q, or KCL, or something else. So uh, you really are free to choose um, whatever uh, kind of technology you want for these specific components. And one last thing, um, this could actually be a topic for a whole talk, which is something that we have invested a lot of time in the last one or two years, which are end-to-end -end tests for these platforms that we have developed. Um, and we have like worked with frameworks that like go around in Kubernetes and we came up with uh, things with end-to-end -end tests that are written in Go, so we can actually replay real end-user uh, use cases so that we can really use the API that we're offering in a way that real users would do. And we can uh, then access resources maybe that have been created on the cloud um, like real users uh, uh, would do. So simple example would be you are in, in, or on AWS and you have your platform that offers an S3 bucket API to create buckets. And so you would create a, a kind of a bucket resource. You wait until this gets ready. Um, and then you access the bucket. And then maybe you push a file. And maybe you uh, load the file from somewhere else and test that all your configurations that you have made that you are, uh, you are expecting to work for an end user, then you can test them yourself. But you don't have to do this manually. So uh, this is a real big thing. Um, that also a lot of our clients care about, which is platform testing, so that you treat your platform as a real software project. Um, as I said, this is really a topic for a whole talk, but I just wanted to briefly mention this. And now we reach the end of our journey, or well, it's not the end of our journey, but that's right, uh, where we are here right now, and have a short summary. Jared. 
All right, sweet. So we got to the end of our journey here. We're basically at 2024. Um, so let's review everything in case we lost anybody along the way. Okay, quick review. Back in 2018, we decided to build a control plane for our platform, right? We wanted to expose an API to our developers so they can get the resources and infrastructure and everything that they need. Uh, that, in, that API was really, really granular and basically uh, enabled them to do maybe too much, one might say. Um, so we decided that we would need to then, in 2020, go to our step two, where we're designing a real platform with a real API. We're doing abstractions now. We're simplifying things so that developers can, yeah, they can get the infrastructure that they need, but it's through a simplified uh, abstraction with a lot less configuration values. They don't have to get exposed to the complexity, and they're doing it like on the golden path in a very safe way, right? Then step three, that was too limiting. We really couldn't do what we all what we wanted to do with the platforms that we're building. So we wanted we needed to have more higher level logic. We needed to capture and codify some more complexity in our unique needs into our platform and be able to have a, a better experience in just doing everything in declarative YAML as well, right? That was too rigid to do it in all in YAML. We escaped from YAML hell. We're using these config languages and, and programming languages that we're comfortable with, that we have expertise in, that can just do more things. So our platform became more useful at that point. And then finally, in 2024, you know, if we want to use a general purpose programming language like Go or like Python, then we can do that now, right? We can have, we can basically do anything. We can use the native tooling stack, the compilers, the linters, the you know, unit testing frameworks, IDEs, all that sort of stuff. So it's a fantastic experience. A really important distinction here, though, is that not every Every team has to go through all four steps of this journey. Um, it's perfectly reasonable to stop at step three, right? You can do really anything you need to do still at step three, but if you want to take that full leap to go to a full general purpose programming language and then having like a full stack to support you and, and really kind of make, if you're a programmer and that you know, would make your life easier, then that's a really fine way to do it. So reviewing the goals that Max started this whole thing with in our pre-flight checks, we wanted an API that's universal. It's covering everything. It's unifying all the cloud providers, covering all the resources. It's declarative. You don't have to write imperative logic to be able to you know, tell your platform what to do. And then it's simplified, because our developers are getting a nice abstraction to work with instead. And then at the end of the day, after all that, it's also powerful. So, final slide here. Uh, you know, if you want to get involved in the Crossplane project, involved in the CNCF open source projects, you can check out some of those resources. Uh, Max, do you want people to email you directly? Is that is that what you're saying here? Sure. Okay, Max is okay with you emailing him directly. So, thanks. <laughs> so thanks very much for the talk. I appreciate it.